Hi, and welcome to the Maryville University Library. Today, we're going to do a tutorial on how to find resources for your microbiology assignment. So this is the library's website, maryville.edu slash library. From on or off campus, this is the best place to always start your research. If we scroll down, we can see that there's a search bar right at the top. This is our discovery search. We'll talk about that more in a second. When we scroll down, we can see that there is a tutorial for the discovery search in case there are any additional questions or you want to watch that video as a refresher. On the other side of this section, we have our live chat. This is 24 seven. You can use this also from on or off campus. These are professional librarians that will be able to help you with any research or library related question. You can also text them. They have a phone number. It is directly under the image of the cell phone here on the website. This is the same group of librarians. So feel free to reach out totally free to you at any time. And let's start searching. So we're going to make sure that we're on full search. And that way, this search will give us access to everything we want to be able to find. So books, articles, journals, all kinds of things. So really, this works almost like Google. You can type whatever you want in here and something will happen. So let's just start with searching for coronavirus and let's see what we find. So now our page is loaded and we're looking at our results page. So from here, we can see that we have over 200,000 search results right there at the top. And directly under that, we have something called a research starter. So a research starter is almost like a librarian approved Wikipedia article. This is going to give us some context to coronavirus, the history of this particular virus, and any other additional information that might be helpful in guiding our research. If we go under the research starter now, we'll actually get to the bulk of the results. So here we have an academic journal. So we can tell it's an academic journal because of the little image above it. So that image will always be the same for academic journal when searching and discovery. We can tell the one below it is also an academic journal. And what an academic journal means is that it's going to be full of peer reviewed articles. So peer reviewed articles are articles that have been reviewed by experts in the field of whatever subject the journal might cover. So we know going in that if we get information from academic journals, generally the information is trustworthy because it has been vetted by multiple experts in the field. So it's always best to use academic journals for assignments and literature reviews. So here we can see that if we look under the title and um, by where it says academic journal, we get a lot of information about the article. It can tell us who published this, who wrote it, the publication date, so we know when it came out, how old or recent it is. And then underneath of all of that information, we have a subject line. So wherever my keyword shows up will be in bold. So it's very easy to tell if something's going to mention coronavirus without even having to necessarily click on it. So I can see that this first result mentions coronavirus twice in two different ways. We can see that we have more academic journals and then we have some periodicals. So periodicals are popular sources and a periodical is just a fancy library word for magazine. So Time Magazine is a pretty popular one. We have People Magazine. So while these articles are about coronavirus, they're going to be written more for public consumption than these particular articles, which will be more data and science based and will have more really specific information that sometimes is over the general public's head because it's really specific to um, people studying this virus. So popular sources are exactly what they sound out. They're for the masses. So an article in time and an article in people, while it might have some valuable information, isn't going to be quite as in-depth and trusted as this academic journal article. Another thing we can look at to kind of help our search is on the left side under where it says refine results. 
there's some buttons we can click on. So if we are interested in looking at only peer-reviewed information and to get those periodicals out under limit two, we can click the middle box, peer-reviewed. So this is going to reload our search and show us only the peer-reviewed information that mentions coronavirus. Directly underneath of that, we have a publication date range. So right now it's showing us information from 1952 all the way to 2020. So I know I am seeing some very current information and some very historical information. If I'm more interested in um, current information, I would definitely want to play around with that publication date range. So I can type in whatever date I want in here. I'm going to do 2015 to 2020. So I can get information about coronavirus in this particular outbreak, but also information about coronavirus before this strain came out. So let's actually go ahead and click on one of these results. So let's go ahead and click on this second one here. If we click on the title, it'll take us to this page. So this page gives us information about the authors. So this one has a lot of authors, which means it's getting a lot of information from a lot of different places and a lot of different organizations are credited with authoring this. So we know where the source is coming from. So the European um, Communicable Disease Bulletin. So it was just published in January of 2020. We can see that our subject terms here mention coronavirus quite a few times. So we definitely know we're looking at something that's gonna be relevant to us. And then just below that, we have an abstract, which gives us our methods, our results, and our conclusions. So we know that they're trying to conduct some kind of experiment or they're providing us some data that will give us further information about coronavirus. So the abstract is just a short little introduction to the article. So if you wanna read that, make sure it's something that you are interested in. And then if you read that and you like what it says and you're interested in reading more, you can come up here and the best way to access the rest of the article is going to be clicking on this PDF full text. So if you are on an iPad, you can actually share and send directly to Notability, which is great. Um, you can download this to whatever device you happen to be using. That way you can access this article very quickly and you don't have to go back through the databases to find it again. If we go back to this page here, there's some things we can do on the right side with this tools box. We can email this to ourselves if we click on that little email, we can type in an email address, we can type in a subject and any comments. And then on the left side, if it has a PDF, it'll attach it automatically. And then if it has a citation, you can attach that as well. And then when you press send, it'll send all of this to whatever email you tell it to. So for the citations, there is a button for citations they are computer generated. So here is the citation for APA. You um, will definitely want to double check this. So it doesn't always get the formatting correct. It's usually the right information and in the right order, but the formatting is always a little funky. So while this is a great tool, please double check to make sure that it's actually in the right format for you. One of the last things I'm gonna mention here is this permalink. So if you are a person who likes to save links, or if you need a link for a citation, which you sometimes do, then you will definitely want to try and find this permalink. So the permalink is going to be at the very bottom of the tools box, and it opens a new URL just above the title. So this will guarantee that you can access this particular page again um, from on or off campus. All you have to do is copy and paste that link. When you click on it, it'll take you directly back here. If you use the link at the top, which is very long and confusing, um, then it will give you an error message almost immediately after you try and click on it. So it will not work again later. So please, if you like to save links, always make sure and look for the permalink. So this is a very short tutorial on how to search in Discovery for academic peer-reviewed articles. If you have any other questions, please look at the information on the rest of the Biology 315 Research Guide, or use the 24-7 library chat, or email reference at maryville.edu and a librarian will get back to you as quickly as possible.